Let's talk a little bit about your uh, tenure as the chairman of the Budget yeah. Committee at a very uh, historic time right. for Democratic politics. And that was when President Clinton came in and decided that he was going to try to balance the budget, which was an unusual uh, course for a Democratic president to pursue. First, why do you think uh, that uh, the Democrats decided to embrace budget balancing after all those years? And that entailed not just raising taxes, but also cutting spending, which was an unusual uh, course for the Democrats uh, to follow as aggressively as they did. And I'm just going to add in there, do you think it was the effect of Ross Perot to a certain extent on the, uh, on the issues that were debated in 1992? Well, maybe some. Uh, but I, I would uh, never accept the basic premise that somehow Democrats are less fiscally responsible than Republicans. My experience in both state and federal government is the opposite. And, um, and um, it was clear, but, but uh, we, we'd been struggling all through the 80s with the deficit. Uh, we had, uh, in 1990, we had a major budget agreement between Bush one and, uh, and uh, the Congress, which uh, was Democratic in the House, and I think it was Republican Senate in, in 90 when we did that agreement. The fact was that most House Republicans opposed Bush one, and that was what was a significant re deficit reduction package, and then we had to do it all alone in, in 93. So that had been an agenda, really, of lots of Democrats, that so we had to get our fiscal house in order for an extended period of time, and Clinton provided uh, the leadership. Uh, I'm not sure Congress could have done by itself. You needed what a president brings to, to the process. And, uh, and we responded, and we did a significant uh, deficit reduction that really was a base for us eventually moving to a balanced budget, and then surplus, and then uh, sort of, to my dismay, uh, watch us blow it again in the 21st century. But that was a painful vote, wasn't it, for a lot yeah, of Democrats yes. raising taxes? Yeah, that's never an easy vote. And yeah. do you think, as some of them believed, that it did uh, contribute to the ultimate loss of the Democratic majority I, in 94? I think it contributed, but I thought there were many other things that were uh, more important. Uh, the, the reality was that when we finished the budget, budget process uh, that year, and the reconciliation bill. I think the ratings of the president were quite high. The ratings of Congress were quite high. I, I've always thought that um, our failure after the high visibility of health care and, and not being able to do anything uh, contributed much more to, to our loss of control. Uh, I think the decision to bring the, the crime bill with the gun provisions up, short, you know, three weeks before the election, four weeks, uh, contributed. And then I suppose there are times when it's just a mood that we want to change things. All of those, I think, were much more important factors than the fact that uh, people had cast tough votes on the budget. I want to pursue the health care question with you, uh, but I want to go stick with this, the budget of 93 for just a moment. Can you give us any uh, stories of what happened behind the scenes there because well, I can just imagine that it was an extremely tense operation. Yeah. You won by one vote, is that Well, correct? there are two parts of, to it. On our budget committee, we dealt with the budget resolution, which was the broad framework. And then you get the reconciliation bill, which puts the specifics in place. On the budget resolution, we spent lots of time uh, 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 in caucus on our side talking to it. We had a committee from left to right and we finally arrived at consensus. Uh, I'm not sure the administration always didn't always like what we did. The administration had a number of uh, new programs that they wanted to pursue within the context of a budget resolution. We assumed none of them. But did President Clinton play an active role with you in Congress? Yes, in we were that? in touch there and uh, with his staff uh, on a regular basis. Uh, but they, they would have liked to have assumptions and favorable words and some new programs. And we never thought it was appropriate to be pursuing new programs uh, within the context of a budget resolution uh, when we were both raising debt revenue and cutting other programs. And uh, 
they would have had the choice of following uh, pay-go rules to do a new program. It would have to come out of some other That means uh, that if you spend money someplace, you've got to cut it somewhere cut it else or, or yeah, vice versa. Yeah, so we didn't uh, eliminate that possibility. But, but then we came to that bill itself, and uh, it was... Uh, I frankly uh, had privately been arguing for some changes. I thought we were in trouble, and I was wrong by one vote. Mm. Fortunately, we won it. Uh, the, the, one that re the part of it that really gave us trouble was a gas tax increase. It's the BTU tax? No, just the plan. This is the, the plan, gas tax. Just okay. the gas tax in, in, the, in the final bill. And I, I had thought that was, and I was strong, I'm a strong advocate of gas taxes. I think uh, we should pay more of the actual cost of driving uh, automobiles in this country than we do. It's heavily subsidized, particularly at the local level. And, uh, and I th I'd privately been arguing that we needed to drop it if we were going to be successful, and I didn't win that argument. I never made it publicly. I think it's the first time I've ever said that I was arguing that privately. And, uh, and um, but fortunately, uh, we won by the one vote in the, in, in the House, and then, as I recall, tie vote in the Senate with Gore breaking the deadlock. And that was really a historic uh, bill that, that passed. And, <clears throat> and you always wonder how things are going to work. And the reality is it worked much better than we expected. Uh, it, it, the economy responded uh, uh, to us doing that deficit reduction package. Uh, interest rates came down, and the economy boomed. And uh, in that debate, all the Republicans in the House, their leadership, were uh, they were all arguing that if we pass this uh, uh, deficit reduction package where we were going to have uh, recessions and u bigger deficits rather than smaller ones, and they were dead wrong. You mentioned the, uh, the health care uh, campaign that was waged by Hillary Clinton yeah. on behalf of the president to get universal health coverage, which crashed and burned in Congress ultimately. You're a, an active uh, activist yourself in the health care area. What did they do wrong, and how much do you think that con has contributed to the failure of Congress over the last decade to ever do anything else meaningful? I thought their plan was too complicated. And, uh, but we've always had trouble with major health care in this country. Uh, Truman tried, didn't get any place. Uh, Bush. Uh, not Bush, uh, Nixon in 73 had, had a major proposal for requiring employers to offer health care in this country. And, uh, and when we started in 93, I asked one of my staff people, what happened to Nixon program? And it so often happens there were conservatives who didn't do it, want it, and, the, and for liberals it wasn't good enough and they were going to do better next year. Well, next year never came, and nothing happened. If the Nixon program uh, of 1973 had passed, we'd be so far ahead of where we are today. It's just incredible. Uh, and uh, Clinton in the end, and uh, we in the Congress had uh, uh, some of that same problem. The conservatives were against it. Uh, there were elements of the left in this country It was uh, were unhappy with it because it wasn't pure enough for their ideology, and we never could, and uh, we just never could put it together. Uh, but did did that team led by Mrs. Clinton again? Uh, did they work as closely with Congress as they should have? I don't know how to make that judgment, and I suppose in hindsight they should have done it better in some fashion. I have. Uh, Another theory on what happened there with uh, uh, and how it may have gone out different, and I might be totally wrong, but, but as you recall, Ross, Dan Rostenkowski was chairman of the Ways and Means Committee at that time, had some legal problems and had uh, to take a leave of absence from that position. I, I've often, often, often thought that if that had not occurred, he might have been somebody who had the toughness uh, to force compromises to make us do something significant. And uh, I can't prove it, you know, but I've always thought we, uh, 
you needed somebody with uh, maybe his non-ideological approach and his toughness to, to force people to get through some of their differences. And it probably would have been some significant form different than what the, the, the president had originally proposed. Uh, but there was nobody uh, with that strength to bring everybody together, and he might have had it. What, uh, what impact do you think uh, the failure of that program has had on the Congress and its ability or will to do something about the absence of health insurance for so many people? Well, I think it's hurt, and uh, I'm not sure the Congress learned the right lessons. But I think uh, clearly any plan that uh, is going to pass probably requires some mandates. And the Congress has been very reluctant to do any mandates, either on companies or on individual sense. But why can't Congress tackle this issue? This would seem to be an issue where constituents would want help. You know, this is a question yeah. that really leads to our bigger question always, which is, when there's a big issue that affects everyone, why is it that Congress seems to have such a tough time uh, addressing it? Uh, I suppose uh, for Congress to address it without very clear presidential leadership gets tough. In, in, in 93, we failed, even with the president very, or 93, 94, uh, even with the president very committed to it. Uh, you always have trouble with how you pay for change. Uh, you always have people who get scared uh, about change, and you find many people who would actually be the greatest beneficiaries being opponents. If you step back from 93 and go back to the Reagan administration, we passed the catastrophic, uh, catastrophic plan for uh, seniors, uh, and then got repealed before it really went into effect, and I was one of the 40-so who voted against repeal. Uh, you remember the folks pounding Rostenkowski's yeah. uh, 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 car in Illinois. And uh, the ironic thing, many of the people who were the most vehement against it were people who were going to benefit the most. In the same in 93, you would find uh, people who were going to be the ben biggest beneficiaries didn't understand some part of it, so they were against it. I think all of it, it's complicated and it's changed. And, uh, and I think the complexity of the, the Clinton program made it difficult to explain so that uh, people could really understand how it would work for them, and it made it easier for people to distort it. So the chart yeah. was really the thing yeah, that may yeah. have done it in. Yeah, yeah. The famous chart that Bob yes. Dole held up on the Senate yeah, floor showing yeah. all the boxes and arrows. Yeah, yeah. 